Well, Dave, first, happy Father's Day. I can only imagine you got to do something special this morning with your family. Is there anything you want to see from this team on this Father's Day? Um, I just, you know, just come in fresh. Um, obviously, uh, yesterday was a forgettable day uh, on many level, on every level. So I think just come in fresh and uh, try to salvage a series and win a baseball game. Um, I like the way Tony's going today. I feel good about that. And uh, I feel good about the guys running out there. So hopefully come out uh, on a Father's Day and get a win. As you guys reflect on Tony's performance, it's coming off the IL, and it seems like you're talking to him. He's been pleased with kind of with each outing. He feels like he's getting back to where he wants to get that all-star level. Is that what you're seeing from him as well? I am. I am. I, I think the thing is, is uh, you know, he's been good uh, when he's out there. Uh, I think there's been up and down as far as uh, – where the velocity is at. I think for me, just kind of watching where he's at, manage his workload to make sure we can get to the next start, to the next start. So just kind of keep it a close eye on Tony, but he's been good. What's been the reports uh, over the course of the last four days? Because he had mentioned on the road trip that in between starts, he hasn't really bounced back as well. Have you gotten positive reports? We have, but I don't think he's completely out of the woods as far as um, no smoke as far as recovery. It's been better. So I think with that, I just want to make sure that, uh, like I said, keep a close eye on him. Recovery is better his, before this start, but uh, you know, not as uh, good as, as it's been in the past. Is that a factor in the, like how much leash he has during a start? Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, it does. Um, you know, obviously, I, I would love to just say that. Um, you know, we could just run him out there for as long as we need to. But, um, you know, with where he's been, I think the health uh, component is, is obviously very important. How much did you expect that to be an issue going forward? I think for the, for the, on the short term, the near term, I think it's certainly front of mind. Um, but hopefully, you know, at, at some point we can get past it and, and kind of completely let the, uh, you know, let the guardrails uh, put them down. Sometimes pitchers in spring training get that dead arm sensation. Since his spring was a, a little bit different and slower pace, do you feel like he's kind of in that period that he has to get out of? Um, I wouldn't say it's a dead arm, um, but I but I understand the question. Um, hopefully, that as the kind of the summer goes on, you get past it. Um, so I don't really know what it is that uh, calling for kind of the, the slow uh, recovery, I guess. But uh, yeah, but the hope is that it'll get past. Anything new on Chris? So uh, he took cortisone shot. He's supposed to be down for 48 hours. And uh, so we'll see, uh, you know, his availability come Tuesday. Is uh, Cindergaard out here throwing today? Is there anything new just on what he's been doing or kind of where he's at right now? Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure. I, I know he was out here with catch play, but you know when he's going to kind of start facing hitters and do all that stuff, I'm not sure when that happens. Considering where your pitching is with the starters and the bullpen, how realistic is it to believe that Julio and Hudson can be here next weekend to help? Um... <clears throat> I think it's very realistic that Julio will be here. Uh, the thought is potentially making a start uh, in Kansas City. Um, with Huddy, I don't see Huddy coming back till after. Uh, I think Huddy actually Huddy after Colorado. I think that Kansas City kind of uh, series is, is when he'll arrive as well. Yeah. Is there any chance that the Cinder Guard is activated and can come back into the bullpen role? Uh, I don't see that happening. Um, I, I know it. Last year in Philadelphia, he pitched in the pen a little bit, but uh, I think for us, it's uh, get him back, ramp him up, and uh, see where we're at as far as the start. Do you know when Julio is making his rehab start? Yeah. Um, so he's going to pitch, uh, I think Tuesday, go to a live, I think that's Tuesday with our guys, and then Then after that, it'll be a rehab. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly which day. But it's sort of dependent on how that live goes. Do you know who's going to start in Anaheim yet? Um, 
the first day is going to be uh, Clayton on Tuesday, and uh, Wednesday we're, we're not totally uh, certain yet. David, are, are Dodgers and Angels a thing, or after 25 years of interleague play, is it just two more games on the schedule? Um, I, I think it's just, it's more just geography driven. I, I mean, I, I think it's uh, it's a thing in the sense of Southern California and, you know, local Los Angeles, greater Los Angeles and Orange County, but um, being in different leagues, obviously not the same division, um, but I enjoy going down there and, and playing the Angels, certainly. They uh, announced that Otani's going to start off. Are you more intimidated facing him as a hitter or as a pitcher? Because I know the answer kind of changes every year for every team. Oof. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, yeah, given the choice, I'd probably rather him uh, just hit because it's only four at bats. Where, uh, you know, when you're looking at 110 pitches, he can really, uh, that's pretty daunting. Have you seen what he's done at the play lately? I have. <laughs> yeah, you still I have. Stand by that. Yeah, it's just it's you pick your poison with that one. Dave, uh, with the elimination shift, I know you've been asked about trying to get that edge back. Yesterday in the fifth, he had the infield, and uh, it seems like when you, since you've come back from the road trip, early innings, you guys have done that more often. Is, are you trying to get a fielding edge by doing that? Has somebody presented stuff to you regarding that? No, it's more of you know where we're at uh, and where they were at in the lineup, there's just certain times where you feel like um, trying to play to minimize a run um, versus conceding a run. Uh, so it's just more of just baseball strategy and you know sometimes it works and, and sometimes it doesn't work out and Crawford had a little, little flair. Um, but certainly in, in retrospect, if I knew he was gonna hit a soft flare, I would have had to play back, you know, so I just don't have that luxury um, when you're making a game time decision. But you know, at that point, I just wanted to play and don't want to concede. Not How just well, that play specifically, but I was just curious if anybody had presented to you, because I feel like on this homestand, you've done it earlier in innings than you have. Yeah, I, I just think that, you know, when you're kind of going how we're going, um, I don't want to give anything away. But, you know, actually, the data speaks to certainly in that situation, regardless of the score to play the infield in, I don't always uh, adhere to that. But if you look at kind of information and potential uh, results, the data speaks to essentially always playing the infield in, even with nobody out, which I don't always uh, agree with. Are there ways you can manage with more urgency when the team is struggling or just kind of do things that would be different? You know, like you said, Kind of knowing that right now you're trying to do everything you can to try to get out of this. this you know, I, I think there's a there's a there's a managing with urgency, and there's also a uh, a panic or forcing something to happen. Uh, you still have to let the game unfold and, and watch the game. Um, so I, I don't, you know, I think it's just about doing things the right way and playing good baseball as opposed to me trying to impose certain decision-making things to force something to happen. I don't think that's a good thought process. Um, but yeah, as Dave said, are there times that, that I might play the infield in more? Because I don't feel like, you know, who we're facing or in that moment in time, I want to make them get a hit to beat us versus just hitting a ground ball, maybe. Um, but I don't want to kind of try to force too is that something you've had to fight yourself on? Because you start talking about when players are, are skeptical, sometimes they'll press. But do you feel like sometimes when the team is kind of not playing well over a set of stretch, you have to fight yourself, not trying to force the issue a little bit? Absolutely. Absolutely. It happens uh, a lot. When things aren't going well, you figure, you try to think what can, what you can do to kind of uh, spark something. But um, we have good players. We still have good players. Um, so for me to... Uh, try to do something totally out of the ordinary, I don't necessarily think that's the right uh, way to go about things. Just quickly, with Julio, the plan is only one rehab start, right? Yeah. Timeline. Yeah. Dave, uh, I know Peralta and Taylor were down yesterday, and that, that was the reason why you had, uh, part of the reason why you had Will DH and JD left, but on Friday night, Will took a foul ball off the mask, 
in extra innings. Was there any concern about that as well, him catching yesterday because of that? No, you know, we checked on that, and uh, it was a good one. And so uh, that was my first thought, but um, that wasn't the uh, the reason behind him uh, DHing yesterday. It certainly was a good thing in the sense of just get him, getting him from behind the plate. But uh, I held my breath a little bit. Do you, do you uh, every time he takes one like that this year, are you gonna is that the instincts to automatically you know, be concerned about the concussions? I think so. Um, <laughs> I, I've got a kind of I got a little I guess PTSD. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he, he's uh, assured us that he's fine and in a good spot. So I just got to make sure that. Uh, yeah, I do hold my breath a little bit. Do, they, do we know, like, does the face mask compared to the mask Will wears absorb any more of these foul tips any better or worse? You know what? Um, I, I don't know, Mike. Um, I do think that Will sometimes is more victim of the one that hits him straight on versus the deflection. deflection. Um, I don't know if it's, uh, you know, what's behind it. And I don't know as far as, you know, with the mask, uh, you know, the technology behind which one's better. Randall has an investment in one. I don't think we're going to go with it. <laughs> I do have a random one for you. Yeah. There's some of those guys in there, it's their first Father's Day. How are you seeing them just evolve as men, as fathers, and even the impact that it's kind of having so much of the benefit as baseball players? Um, it, it's, it's cool to see. Um, some of these guys are growing up and, and uh, fatherhood makes you do that. So I think for me, the main thing is they sort of have a uh, different perspective on life and baseball in general. So uh, it's really, uh, you know, some of the things that guys used to sweat, the small stuff, they're not uh, as critical as other things. Uh, so there's more perspective in there, which rightfully so.